Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. XRP, quote, abruptly comes to life, end quote. Uh, that's part of a headline from a very popular crypto media outlet I want to highlight. It's been interesting to see, despite the fact that as of Friday, you know, there's that pullback and crypto markets been trading mostly sideways since then. Despite that, lots of very positive XRP headlines. And if you just look at uh, factors other than price specifically, uh, <laughs> The point keeps getting made, whether it's whales purchasing XRP, the ledger looking lively in a general sense. Uh, lots of other metrics look really positive. And I also I want to share with you this, too. Um, if you've been following me all up on the Moon Lambo channel for a while, you know that I'm a fan, perhaps, of Raul Paul, who is a former Goldman Sachs executive. And uh, he's the also the, the founder and CEO of Real Vision, which is a platform that... Um, covers all sorts of finance stuff, but very heavy in crypto. And I just think he just strikes me as one of the people in the crypto space that is actually intellectually honest. That's how he strikes me anyway. You can't know for sure what's in the heart and minds of people. Um, but he really does strike me as, he's, he, he just, he strikes me as a person that's very open-minded. He even started looking into XRP towards the end of 2020, right before the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit. And he got a lot of flack for it. And he said something to the effect of, from the Bitcoin maxi trolls out there giving him grief, he says... Uh, I'll not be told what I can consider, I'm paraphrasing here, but I consider what I can, can purchase and what I can talk about. And he pushed back against that heavily. And then he ended up purchasing, uh, I don't know how much XRP, but a bunch. And uh, he indicated that he does think that XRP at some point is going to go above $10. Well, he's <laughs> there's some new comments from him. And this doesn't sound wacky. I mean, you guys let me know. I, I don't make price predictions. But for crypto markets on the whole, uh, he's anticipating that it's it's quite probable that, uh, although not guaranteed, that you could see a 200-fold increase in crypto markets from the current level of just a little over a $1 trillion market cap. So he's talking about a $200 trillion market cap. Now, I've been saying for the longest damn time, if crypto is really going to be globally adopted, if we're right about this, it's it's like, how could it not at some point be worth well over $100 trillion? I've said that many times before. And it's not like I know for sure, but how could it not get there? And so you're thinking, okay, 200x increase from current levels, but actually it's way better than that if you're in altcoins, because consider when he's saying that, at the level we're at right now, Bitcoin, is it's got a market cap of 406 billion at the current price level. So it's, it's, it's you know, a little over a third of all of crypto market cap. So if you think about in terms of multiplier effect, my gosh, you got these other coins with way less money in them, like XRP only has a $17 billion market cap. That's an incredible opportunity in terms of potential multiplier effect right there. So anyway, I'm going to let him uh, make his own argument, and I'm going to share with you specifically what he said. I got some quotes from him in an article, and uh, also some <laughs> headlines out there that sound very scary, and there actually is bad stuff in terms of, uh, from an economics perspective, what's going on here. But I just want to make the broader point. So even though a lot of what's being stated just from an economic perspective and layoffs, all this stuff happening, true, and it's probably going to get a lot worse in those regards, in terms of like where things ultimately go from a speculative perspective, whether you're talking about stocks or crypto, it's not going to matter if you just let time pass. And so I'll flesh that out further, but I'm still going to highlight it because there's a reason I've been saying a lot of stuff I've been saying. So yes, I firmly believe that things will be way better at some unknown point in the future in terms of where, where the price levels are. There's incredible opportunity for life-changing wealth. I'm very firm on that. I strongly believe that the everyday person I believe can achieve that. Um, not that there's no risk involved. There's plenty of risk associated with this. But um, it doesn't mean that in times like these, because it's clear that we're in a recession, doesn't mean things from that perspective can't get worse. And it looks like they probably will. But, yeah, you know, I'll share additional ideas in a moment. But first, let me be clear. I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Damn it. If you don't like it, you can just get out. As I record, this XRP is at 34 cents, Bitcoin at 21,234 bucks. Market cap for the asset class, just a little over one trillion at the time that I'm recording this. Bitcoin dominance at 39.14%, and the crypto fear and greed index down to 29 out of 100. So people feeling very scarce care out there. And here is the, the headline, and I'm just going to highlight this to make the point because they actually cover a lot of stuff I've been saying in recent days, so I don't feel the need to rehash this, but just to point out, that this is broadly recognized as the case, and it's certainly positive. Here's the headline from the Daily Hoddle. XRP network abruptly comes to life 
as number of whale transactions surges to three month high analytics firm. And this is something I literally just pointed out, probably even just yesterday. I made it because in the video I was talking about price in general and markets, but uh, it's just so interesting to see that as prices have gone down, you, you just see <laughs> XRP whales buying the fear. Like the larger accounts out there, they, they've just been buying a boatload of XRP, tons and tons of transactions. And, it stand, and if you just look at the timing of when this is happening, it's a no-brainer. The type of people that are in the know and uh, understand how market cycles work and uh, the ups and downs of it, they're not exactly afraid to, to purchase somebody else's fear. If somebody's scared because price is going down, they want to get out. No shortage of whales that are happy to come in and purchase that. Just saying. Um, and then there was this from uh, chart analyst Income Sharks. Uh, he shared the chart that is currently on your screen right now. And he's talking about stocks. And I think that it's important to rec talk about stocks, certainly because stocks move in tandem with the crypto asset class. It just, it all moves together currently. I don't know if it's always going to be like that, but that's how it is in 2022. So here's what he wrote. Stocks go up in almost a straight line for 30 days. And all it takes is two red candles at resistance for everyone to call for a massive dump and recession again. Media headlines are all bearish again. We usually know what's next. Yeah, exactly. So, and I pointed out the, as far as media headlines, if you're just talking about headlines specifically having to do with, are we in, a, you know, should we expect bullish market activity or bearish market activity? Well, you can see that the vast majority of those types of articles are saying bear activity. Now, those types of articles are separate from reports of, um, you know, layoffs and stuff like that. I'm just talking in terms of actual media reports having to uh, speculate on what's going to come next. They're playing on people's fears. And typically when we see this, that means that you're pretty much at the bottom or very close. That's what history has shown when you have a, a huge jump up. I showed you a chart on this yesterday. I don't have it for this video. I shared it literally yesterday. And it shows that when there's a massive uh, increase in those types of negative stories about where the market's probably going to go, that's where the bottom is. And then when you get the positive stories, uh, an influx of positive stories, that could be an indication that you're at the top. So we're nowhere near that. We're, we're at the bottom. That's what it looks like right here. But it is funny to see, you know, stocks going up for basically a whole month. All took it was two red candles and at, at resistance, no less. And everybody now says, okay, well, the direction changed. It must, it's probably just going to do that forever. It's so funny. Whatever direction markets are going, whether it's stocks, whether it's crypto, Oh, it's just, it's probably just going to do that forever. And people feel things as a result. Of it. And as soon as the direction changes, they feel the new thing. It's so stupid. That's why I love to point this out. Um, here is a headline from uh, TXMC, who is a, an individual who was, I think is very insightful. And he uh, was previously with Glassnode, which is on-chain analytics. And he just wrote, Ford announces job cuts. You can see here, uh, Ford confirms layoffs, says it is cutting about 3,000 jobs primarily in U.S. and Canada. So this is the type of stuff that I'm going to continue to watch. Uh, because look, the whole time Bitcoin's existed, it hasn't lived in an environment where the economy is like truly in the crapper. Like, yeah, I understand the COVID one thing, but markets still went up ultimately. Um, and so that was a little bit different. So like if you're talking about an instance, if, the, if, if it actually is going to get lower, so that's one thing that could potentially be different. But then you have all these wild card instances because there's still very... Uh, weird and negative supply chain issues going on. You are now seeing uh, reports of layoffs, and that's probably only going to get worse. So these are the types of wildcard things that could, in theory, push markets down, even if it's just temporarily. So that's the only reason I'm pointing that out. That th This is something that we really didn't have to contend with during the, the last major bear market, at the end of you know, 2017, beginning part of early, early 2018 in particular, when crypto markets just plummeted. This is a whole different environment. So even if that happens, though, it doesn't mean that you're going to have some sort of price depression that just goes down forever and ever and ever. That's not what I'm saying. But still, it's worth being aware of this. And so here's the headline from CNBC. 50% of employers expect job cuts survey fines. Here's how to prepare for a potential layoff. And I'm not going to read the article, but I'll, I'll share this, uh, a couple of bullet points here. Best Buy, Ford Motor, HBO Max, Peloton... Shopify, Remax, Walmart, and Wayfair are among the firms that have announced layoffs in recent weeks. And there's another bullet point that says 50% of firms anticipate a reduction in overall headcount in the next 6 to 12 months, according to a PWC survey. Now, look, this should be no surprise, and, and I've been talking about this also, in the, especially over the last couple months. 
the Fed has been hiking up the interest rate in an attempt to tamp down inflation. And why would that work? Because as you increase the interest rate, people are willing to take on less risk and, and less debt. The higher the interest rate, the less of that activity you're going to get. So then if there's less loans taking out, uh, well, think about it. who's taking out the loans. You could say consumers, certainly businesses. So there's less economic activity. Revenue goes down. Profits go down. People get laid off. This is not exactly a surprise. And here you can see even home prices, like <laughs> if you've been following this, even in terms of what's happening in the housing market, it's just been ballistic here. But look at this headline from New York Post from today. Home prices plunging in pandemic boom towns as market slumps. I, I just, I'm, still, I'm just trying to make a broader point here. I'm not going to read this article or even highlight anything else. But just keep this in the back of your mind. There could be some wacky stuff going on that might result in, uh, you know, directionally <laughs> crypto markets not doing what we saw during the last bear market in 2018. It's a possibility. I'm just, it's a consideration. Uh, but even if so, there's, I'm, I, I don't hope it don't sound too negative here. I'm, I'm an optimist. Like, I'm thrilled to be here every day. I don't, I, like, to me, it doesn't matter. Because the idea that we're not going to have a rebound, even if the scary thing happens, the idea we're not going to have a rebound, that, that's ridiculous. It, you'd have to believe that the United States is going to cease to exist if you believe that. And I do not believe that. That's absurd. You know, because, it, and why do I say that? What, stock market's going to zero? Well, do we not have businesses anymore? I mean, if you're talking about pure economic collapse, okay. Well, then we got bigger problems, right? But uh, it, it's going to come back, and the crypto asset class is going to be massive, and there still is this incredible opportunity for the everyday person to achieve life-changing wealth in crypto. I, I very firmly believe this, which is not to make light of the risk. There's risk investing in anything, but damn the opportunities. It's incredible. So here's the headline from the Daily Huddle. Crypto market cap could burst to $200 trillion amid largest wealth accumulation in history. Macro guru Rao Paul. Oh, this is good stuff. Listen up to this. And this is a guy, like I said at the outset of the video, uh, he does think that XRP is going to be blazing past that $10 mark at some point in the future. Former Goldman Sachs executive Rao Paul says an explosion of the crypto market cap by 200x in the next decade is within the realm of possibility. In a new interview with crypto analyst Scott Milker, the macro guru says that we could witness an unprecedented accumulation of wealth in the next 10 years. And check out this quote. What I do know is if I just extrapolate the network adoption effects, the number of users, and where the number of users is going and assume it gets to somewhere between 4 and 5 billion in the next 10 years or so, which would be central bank digital currencies enabling it, all ticketing, a whole bunch of stuff going that way, the market cap of the space goes from $1 trillion to $200 trillion. People don't realize the world has never seen an accumulation of wealth like that in history. This would be the shortest period of time of the largest accumulation of wealth ever seen, end quote. Does that not sound like the same type of stuff in a general sense that I've been saying, I have stated before, and I firmly believe this, like the, 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 with the advent of the crypto asset class, this is a once in a species event. This can only happen one time. You can only create crypto one time. I mean, in, unless you play into this idea of, you know, an asteroid hitting and then a few humans survive and then have to restart and then like thousands of years, then they recreate it again. They figure it out. Okay, fine. Outside of something stupid like that, in which case you're playing gotcha with me. <laughs> Outside of something like that. No, it's a once in a species event. It, it really is. And there has never in the history of mankind been uh, you know, an asset class created like this that creates, that has these types of returns, which we've been seeing for 13 years now. This is unprecedented, never happened before, and we're so fortunate to be living through this right now. We are so fortunate to be living through this. And, and so, no, the world's never seen anything like this. He is spot on here. And, and it's also why, you know, look, Bitcoin, fine. It's, it's, it's already, maybe it sticks around forever. That's fine. I hope it does, actually. But there's already so much money in it, even at this reduced price relative to its all-time high near $70,000. There's already so much money into it that it's not that it can't be life-changing given a sufficient timeline, whatever that might subjectively mean to certain people. But if you look at the rest of the altcoins, like you say 200x, and that's why I kind of was getting at this at, earlier in the video. I hope, I hope the idea I was trying to get across made sense to you. I mean, if you're, so you're saying, let's just say the market cap is a trillion. It's, it's about there. And 40% roughly of that is Bitcoin. 
So if you're talking about only a 200x increase, well, yeah, if you factor Bitcoin in there. But what about everything else? Like, seriously, what about everything else? Because, like I said, XRP's got only a $17 billion market cap. You know, if, if XRP ever matches the uh, Bitcoin's all-time high market cap, then it goes from $17 billion to, what, $1.2 trillion or something like that? You know, and then Bitcoin, if it's going to keep leading, then it would probably be worth way, way, way more than that by then anyway, which is fine. I don't care. I don't care if XRP is ever number one. And it could be. It could be. I don't rule that out either. But I don't care. As long as I get mine, I don't really care. If Bitcoin's always number one, cool. It, just, it doesn't matter. I just don't. I don't get in that ideological crap. But yeah, <laughs> if XRP is going to stick around, why would it not eventually get up to that type of level if it's going to stick around forever? So yeah, there's a lot of ifs, but man, I have strong conviction for a reason here. It's just... There's never been anything like this in history. I feel so sorry for the people that uh, like aren't aware of this yet, you know? And I get the feeling, because you know, when I jumped in almost five years ago, I was like, ah, one of my first thoughts was, uh, I wish I knew about this sooner. But I did recognize pretty quickly, okay, this is a new thing. It's a new asset class. There's like no utility yet. That's how early it is. So it's like, if I just stick with it, I'm sure it's going to be fine. And even now, like it's already, what I've been putting is already worth quite a bit more. But uh, even if even if I end up going under because crypto is so volatile, and, you know, scary things happen to crypto markets, think like I'm not going to freak out about it. I think that given a no, long enough time horizon is not going to matter. That that's the way that I look at this right now. And so to see Rao Paul, um, you know, saying this because to be sharing the concepts, I've literally been saying stuff strikingly similar to this for years on this channel. I'm like, yeah, I think he gets it. And then the piece continues, while Paul is extremely bullish on the long-term prospects of crypto, he acknowledges that he could be wrong by a wide margin. Now, folks, um, even if he is, I like what he's saying because he could be off by a lot and it's still life-changing. <laughs> you know? So check this out. Check out this quote. Even if I'm wrong, let's say I'm a total moron and I'm wrong by 90%. Will, uh, will, will $20 trillion from $1 trillion. I'll still take that bet because it's still the best bet in the world, and that's by me being wrong by 90%. So think about that. If you're talking about an asset class ballooning to that degree 20x, and presumably, and he says within the next 10 years or so, even if it took 10 years for it to 20x, that's going to dramatically outpace any other asset class on the damn planet. And that's if he's off by 90%. So, like, <laughs> I just... I am not worried about this stuff, folks. I am thrilled to be here or a single day. Let me know what you think, but I'm going to wrap up here for now. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.